which older Samsung flagship device should you pick up in 2023? Now, I specifically said older flagship, so you will not see the S23 on this table. That is not an old flagship. That's the brand new S23 that just came out last month. So we're talking about older Samsung flagships. Now we have here the Note 9, the Note 10 Plus, the Note 20 Ultra, the S20 Ultra, and the Z Fold 2. Now, as you can see, I'm a Samsung Knight. <laughs> I'm a fan of Samsung. Now, I don't have any of their newer devices because I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like the direction Samsung is going. Of course, there are going to be people out there that, you know, it doesn't matter what Samsung does. They're going to buy their products anyway. That's just not me. I'm all about the best value. I do love Samsung as far as, you know, how they do, you know, you know what? I say more so with these devices <clears throat> and, you know, as far as the software, like One UI is my favorite software skin or Android skin. Definitely my favorite. No question about it. But at the end of the day, <laughs> this is my favorite device. The Mi 11 Ultra. This is my favorite device. OK, even though the most used phone is my Note 20 Ultra, but this is my favorite phone, period, is the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. I love this device. It's just great in every every way. But we're not gonna be talking about the Mi 11 Ultra. We're gonna talk about should you pick up, which older Samsung flagship device should you pick up? So you have some choices here. Now, when it comes to the prices, the prices vary on all these devices, of course, Probably the most expensive is st still might be the Z Fold 2. But you have to check on eBay, check on Amazon for the different prices. But I know for the majority of these, you can get these for all either under 350 or under 300 for some like maybe the Note 9. You could probably get way under, maybe you can get it for under $250. So you just got to check Amazon or check eBay and see the different prices, but you're gonna get great value with all of these devices. Now, what else is important is that all of these devices here are all unlocked for all carriers. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's gonna be very important, for, especially for those of you that live in the States. Now, for you that live outside the States, that'll be helpful to you too, that it's unlocked. So unlock for all carriers. So. You know, bloatware, you know, none of that stuff. Just Samsung's, you know, two of every kind, you know, because they seem like they're in a fight with Google. Google put a calendar, Samsung put their own calendar. But that stuff don't bother me, honestly. I know it bothers some people. It don't bother me. All right. So the first device we're going to start with, which one of my all-time favorite devices. And right after this device is when Samsung started going in the opposite direction and to me downhill when it comes to certain aspects of their devices and the first one i want to start with was one of samsung's best overall devices and most complete flagship premium device and that would be the samsung galaxy note 9. now i'm not taking any of these devices out of the case because you already know what they look like <laughs> but i got them in the case because it's so easier for me to hold and for me to grip but this is the samsung galaxy note 9 this was and still is a terrific premium flagship device it's just loaded with everything you would ever want in a flagship device and i'm going to name some things now i'm not going to name everything with every device but i'm just going to go through this very very quickly okay so now, this was released in 2018, so this device has been around for quite some time. And you know the thing, you know how I know this device is so great is because there are people still to this day that are still buying this device. I mean, that's amazing to me because this device does not get any software updates whatsoever and no security patches whatsoever, but yet people still buy this device. It was it's just that good, honestly. And it has everything that you would want in a premium device. 
Okay, so let me share that with you, what this thing offers. First, you start off with a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display, which is absolutely beautiful. And this phone, this size of this device may be the perfect size for many people because everybody don't like big giant phones. Like, you know, the biggest phone I have on this table is going to be between the Note 20 Ultra and S20 Ultra. Now, when you open up the Fold, of course, that's going to have the biggest display when you open it up at 7.6 inches. But both of these devices are 6.9 inches. This is by far the smallest screen on this table at 6.4 inches. So you may not want something, you know, as big as these devices. So 6.4 inches may be the sweet spot for you. Now, the only thing with this, you just have, you have a thin bezel, a thin chin at the bottom and you have somewhat of a, a bigger uh, forehead at the top, but it's no big deal. It's not going to be a big deal for most because they know that there's some things going on inside this bezel here. So it ain't, it's just not a bezel just to be a bezel. This thing's going on inside uh, that bezel there. That is very, very helpful. And also there's no notch, no camera cutout. Some people don't want even a camera cutout. Now the camera cutout don't bother me because it's so small. It's not intrusive for me, but I can't speak for everybody else. I'm only speaking for myself, but that's not going to be a big deal for most. Now, 6.4 inch quad hd super amoled display which is beautiful you're getting face unlock which is always great because that should be standard on any premium device you're getting the iris sensor that iris sensor i love so you press this home button now this home button vibrates and it's what activates the iris sensor so as soon as you press that let me turn this back off i don't know if it's going to catch me behind the camera no, it's not going to catch me behind the camera because I'm too too far away. Oh, it actually opened. Okay. So that's your iris sensor, meaning you basically open up the phone with your eyes. I love that, and I hate that Samsung removed that from their future device. I hate. I really hate that because I thought that was so innovative, and it was kind of James Bondish. I mean, I just love being able to open up the phone, not with my face, but with my eyes, and it was super secure. Because I was able to use that even with my banking app. So I absolutely love the iris sensor. So for those of you that are interested in this phone and you get it, you're going to love the iris sensor. Mine works flawlessly. No problems. No, it's not slow. It's not delayed. It's not giving me any issues whatsoever. I love it. All right. So you get the iris sensor. You got a rear fingerprint sensor. Some people just love an old-fashioned um, you know, regular fingerprint sensor. They don't like the in display because sometimes they could just not be as accurate. I know sometimes I have issues with the in display fingerprint sensor on my Note 20, but when you have a regular fingerprint sensor that you could just push, it's going to work every single time. On this device, I mean, it's 100% accurate and it's pretty fast. It's not slow at all. It opens right up. Boom. Okay, not the fastest but it works every time. There's no missing it. There's no getting it right the first. It works every single time. Love that. So you got the fingerprint sensor on the rear. You're getting dual stereo speakers that sound really good. You're getting um, a heart rate monitor right here on the back, right here next to the camera, right here. You put your finger right there. That's something they removed. And I love that. Expandable storage up to one terabyte. For those of you that need it, because I know I'm a person that needs expandable storage. That's also something that Samsung removed from their uh, future devices. You get your LED notification sensor, which is basically a combination of the iris sensor and the LED. It does. It actually does both. So it'll be flashing when you get a notification. It'll flash certain colors to let you know that you got a text message or to flash a certain color when you're just getting regular notifications. So the LED notification sensor is also something that Samsung uh, removed from their future devices. You get wireless DeX on here, wireless DeX on this device. Okay, that came out in 2018. That's really cool to have that. I'm glad Samsung added that to this device. You're getting a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. I can easily get through a full day on this device as old as it is as old as it is a headphone jack 
Yes, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Remember that, y'all? We used to get a headphone jack. <laughs> yeah, that was standard. <laughs> All right. You're getting fast wired charging. Now, on this one, it was 15 watts. So you're looking at about an hour and 42 minutes. So that's not the worst, but compared to today's standard, it's pretty slow. But uh, 15 watt wired charging, hour and 42 minutes to charge from zero to 100. Uh, you're getting six six or eight gigs of RAM, depending on what variant you get. Got the Snapdragon 845. Always on display. Sorry, I'm, I forgot to mention that. Always on display right here. So you get your date, time, day, battery percentage, notifications, which is cool. And you get wireless charging. No reverse wireless charging. That didn't come out until the note 10 plus so you do get wireless charging and fast wired charging snapdragon 845 the phone still runs very well for me i don't know about you if you have one that runs slower or not i know mine still run pretty good internal storage you're getting 128 gigs there is a, also a 512 gig variant no 256 gig variant on this device you're getting samsung pay with mst that meaning magnetic secure transmission meaning you can use this phone even on old credit card terminals and it will work okay and mst is also something samsung removed from their future devices you got headphones in the box when this came out you got extra s pin tips and the tool to remove the s pin and replace it with another s pin tip you don't even get that anymore um, you get edge panels, of course, edge lighting, secure folder, good lock, IP68 water and dust resistance. You're getting the Bluetooth and you're getting the Bluetooth S Pen. So this is all the things that the Note 9 offers. As soon as they, you know, got, you know, stopped producing this phone, they went to the Note 9 and that's when things started changing and not necessarily for the better in all areas maybe in some areas but not all areas so this is the great and classic and masterful samsung galaxy note 9 which i still even though the software is old i still recommend this phone to this day because of all that you get with it it's still a great device to this day next let's talk about the note 10 plus and i forgot to mention Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back. Premium build. Excellent build quality on the Note 9. Now, of course, I got this in the case as well. The Note 10 now. Just because this case is so thick, I'll just take it off really quick just so you can see the back of the phone. Okay? All right. So I'm going to put it back in the case. Because so this is a really big, thick case. So you can, like, put a couple of credit cards right inside here even though I haven't done it, but you can. All right, so with the Note 10 Plus, this was released in 2019, the year right after the Note 9 was um, produced. Now with this one, you had a bigger 6.8 inch dynamic, a uh, Quad HD Plus dynamic AMOLED display, okay? Beautiful, beautiful display. No doubt about it. You can see it's just much bigger than that of the 6.4 inch of the Note 9. This is 6.8 inch. So they went up four inches when it came to the size. So some of you may like that. Some of you might like, might not like it. You may like the sweet spot at 6.4 inches with the Note 9. But for those of you that want more screen real estate, you may want the Note 10 Plus. Keep in mind, basically bezel-less. Then you have this one, the whole punch camera cutout was first introduced was on the Note 10 Plus. And it was it wasn't it wasn't that bad at all for me. I didn't mind it. And I like that it's in the middle and not on the side. Now, some people like the, you know, the camera cutout pushed to the side. But for symmetry, I like it in the middle where it's at. I like that better. All right. Now, with this you got this is when the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor was first introduced on Samsung device. Of course, it was introduced on the S10 devices before the Note 10 uh, came out in August because the S series comes out in April and the Note used to come out in August. So it was first introduced on the S10. Then it came to the Note 10 Plus. 
So it's right here. You just press it. And it usually works most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. Only thing I hate, no animation, no haptic feedback. It's just it was just it's just boring, but as you can see, it works well. Okay, it's not bad at all. And it's very secure. All right. So next, you got Gorilla Glass 6. Excellent build quality. Not the most resilient when it comes to scratches. So Gorilla Glass 6 is not the most resilient when it comes to scratches. Because this one got some really bad scratches that come from here all the way down. I mean, serious, serious scratches. Now, you, you're probably not going to, well, you're definitely not going to be able to see it with the screen on. But I don't know if you're going to be able to see it with it off. It comes right here. It comes all the way down. And it's really bad. It interferes when I'm using the S Pen. Let me wipe it down a little bit. Maybe you might be able to see it. Let me see. Wipe it down. See if you'll be able to see it. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it starts right. See it right there? And it comes all the way down. It's really, really bad. It's, it's really deep. Really deep. I'm not sure you'll be able to if you're seeing it or not on camera. But it's there and it's pretty bad. So Gorilla Glass 6, not the most resilient when it comes to scratch resistant. It's just not. But, you know, what can I say? <laughs> just just wanted to put that out there. All right. Now, this was Samsung's um, first device that they put 256 gigs of internal storage. That was the base storage. 256 now i love that because the next thing that came into play which is always great was expandable storage up to one terabyte so you already started out with 256 of internal and then you could still expand it up to one terabyte so that's awesome this came with 12 gigs of ram that was the base storage unlike what samsung did with the s s23 which the base storage is eight gigs of ram which makes no sense to me. This was 12 gigs of RAM. And this was 2019. You got 2023 and it's 8 gigs of RAM at 1200 bucks. But y'all 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 tell me what's wrong with that picture. All right, the Snapdragon 8, 855 still runs very well. 25 watt wired charging. This was the first time Samsung added faster wired charging because previously with the Note 9 it was 15 watt fast charger so now you got 25 watt fast charger but the only thing that was different than this you had also 45 watt capability now they didn't put the 45 fast charger in the box but if you get if you went out and bought a 45 watt super fast charger it's going to charge this phone in under an hour so i love that 256 gigs of internal storage and 45 watt super fast charging Love that. The battery, 4,300 milliamp hour battery. I always got through a full day, no problem. Now, when it comes to the cameras, you had um, an ultra wide lens. This was the first time they put an ultra wide lens on the Note because with the Note 9, the, the two things that were missing from the Note 9 was an IR blaster, in my opinion, and a wide angle lens. It didn't, it didn't have a wide angle lens. So this was the first time samsung put a wide angle lens on here remember this only had two cameras this has three so you had the wide the ultra wide and the telephoto which i love now dual stereo speakers on this bad boy that sounds good you got a set of akg headphones in the box with this device and also you got headphones in the box when this one first came out as well all right android 12 one ui 4.1 Software, of course, is ended for this device as well, like the Note 9, no more software or security patches. But like I said, that don't matter to everybody. There's still built-in security on these devices, McAfee and Knox. So all you got to do is scan, and it'll tell you if your device is secure. Let me pull it up for you real quick to show you. You go into Battery and Device Care. You just click on that. Now, okay, maybe this one doesn't have it because I don't see it here. Yeah, I don't see it here on this one. I'm going to show you on... Maybe maybe it's with the newer software. I know it's on my Note 20. No, it's not on this one. Not on this one. 
because that's the unlock one. For some reason, it's not on that one. Let me. I just want to show you real quick. Okay, go into settings. Unless this one's unlocked too, and it might, yeah, it's not on this one either. Wait a minute. So for update maintenance mode, auto optimization. No, it's not. It's on. It's on like the Note 20 Ultra that I'm using right now to film this is definitely on there, and it's a device ma device um maintenance, and you could bet yeah protect your device while the no that's why your phone's being repaired. Yeah, this one doesn't have it either, but. I guess only the carriers have it because it seemed like with the unlock phones, I don't have it where I can check to make sure my device is, is, is secured. But for some reason, it's not on these unlocked because this is unlocked. This is unlocked. And I'm not sure. I think that's unlocked too because for some reason, it's not on here either. And I know it's on the one I'm recording with, but I can't show you that. So, but it does have its own layer of security on here just to let you know. All right, let's move on. So this is when things started changing from the Note 9 to the Note 10 Plus. No iris sensor, they removed that. No heart rate monitor, they removed that. No headphone jack, they removed that. And no LED notification sensor, they removed that. So those are the four things that they removed off of this device that was on that device. And this one cost more money. I don't understand that. Why would you remove these features and I like and a lot of people like these features but it didn't make any sense for them to remove them but of course they were following Apple all right and the dumbest thing they did in my opinion was put the power button on the left the power button was always on the right they put it on the left I hate that but with the note 20 ultra they put it back where it belongs on the right side I'm not hating on lefties but most people are right-handed and Samsung has always Put the power button on the right side. So that was dumb placement in my opinion. And they still had the volume rockers on the left. Which a lot of people like. They like the separation. But I like everything on the right. That's just me. <coughs> Excuse me y'all. But to not let that be an irritant. All you have to do. Double tap. Turn off the screen. So this is the Note 10 Plus. This is definitely something worthy to consider picking up as well. If you wanted a more updated note that from the note nine next up is the note 20 ultra the big boy the phone that i use the most right now and of course you got the s pen which i forgot to mention bluetooth s pen um it's more sensitive to the touch of the screen than that of the note nine i forgot what you call it the latency is better on the note 10 plus but the latency is even better on the note 20 ultra they they improved the the latency on the s pen from the note 9 all the way up to the note 20 ultra now with the note 20 ultra of course released in 2020 has a 6.9 inch quad hd plus dynamic amulet display with hdr 10 plus and a 120 hertz refresh rate this was the first note that got a high refresh rate now in my opinion the Note 10 Plus should have gotten at least minimum a 90 hertz refresh rate. But for some reason, Samsung just left it off. And I believe that hurt that phone to some degree, in my opinion. But at least with the Note 20 Ultra, which was the last official Note, they put a 120 hertz refresh rate on this device. So also, you're getting Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and the back. Now, Gorilla Glass Victus is the absolute truth on here. I have absolutely no scratches whatsoever. I'm not even talking micro scratches. No scratches whatsoever on this screen. Gorilla Glass Victus is very resistant to scratches. So they hit the right thing with Gorilla Glass Victus because absolutely no scratches. I've had metal, I've had keys brush up against this. No scratches whatsoever. So Gorilla Glass Victus is the real deal if you want to rock this without a case now i don't as you can see i rock all my kick my phones with cases but if you want to rock it without a case you'll be fine i wouldn't suggest you dropping it on hard surfaces because glass is going to scratch and break if you drop it onto something hard so keep that in mind all right so you got your always on display as you can see here i got a little different one samsung has the best always on displays in the business as far as i'm concerned you got face unlock, 
course, you got your ultrasonic fingerprint sensor. See, got to hold your finger a little longer. Sometimes it just acts a little funny. All right. You got 12 gigs of RAM. Now, check this out. Base storage, internal storage, 128. So how do you go from 256 on the Note 10 Plus, which was the base storage, and 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 take away 100 and something gigs and go back to 128? How do you do that and why would you do that? Makes absolutely no sense to me. No sense whatsoever. From 256 to 128. I don't get that at all. All right. Now, you do, you still got expandable storage up to one terabyte. So that was the one good thing that they did right. They kept expandable storage on this device. So if you were thinking about picking up the Note 20 Ultra, you could go ahead. If you're saying you need expandable storage, you're going to get it on this device. You're going to have it. All right. Snapdragon 865. It does run real well. No problems with that. 4,500 milliamp hour battery. That's the only issue that I really have with this device more so than anything is that now for me now I I, I got my my brightness on max because that's just the way I rock my phone. I got my always on display at its highest setting. I'm pretty much using all the features. I'm using 120 hertz. So I use my phone really heavy. So moderate to heavy. I'm, I go at it with my phone. So my battery life is going to be different than yours. I can get through a full day, but not much more than that. Now, I'm not talking about 18, 19 hours. I'm talking about probably, I say, about 13, 14 hours, which is good, you know, good for most people. But if you run this really hard, you know, for me, I can't get through a full day if I go crazy. I, I can't get through a full day. I can probably get eight hours, but I ain't going to get anything, you know, further than that. So I don't know why Samsung didn't put a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in this, calling it an Ultra. You put a 4,500 milliamp hour and you put a 5,000 in the S20 Ultra. doesn't make any sense to me. It really doesn't that you will put a smaller battery in this device and both of the screens are the same size. And this has 1,500 nits peak brightness also, which is actually brighter than that of the S20 Ultra. This only has 1,300 nits peak brightness. This is a brighter device, and you put a smaller battery. It doesn't make any sense. So this is what I'm talking about. I don't know or understand what Samsung was doing. They, they just started taking two and three and four steps backwards. I don't understand that. It's like they almost wanted the Note 20 Ultra to fail because of the things they did with it. I don't, I don't get it. All right. So they only upped this 200 milliamps from that of the Note 10 Plus. The Note 10 Plus was 4,300. This is 4,500. So they only added 200 milliamps, which is a joke. All right. So you had your 25 watt fast wired charging, but there's a problem. No 45 watt super fast charging. They removed that. So you had 256 internal storage, 45 watt super fast charging. And they took that away and only gave you 25 watt charging, which makes no sense. This is supposed to be the ultra. Why would you remove 45 watt super fast charging? I don't get that. You still get 15 watt fast wireless charging, which is not that fast. You're looking at about two hours and 42 minutes to fully charge this device. And you got 4.5 watt reverse wireless charger. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it with this one. You got 9 watt reverse wireless charger. So once again, they decreased something. So you went from 9 watts of reverse wireless charger down to 4.5. I don't get that. This is supposed to be the ultra. Why would you reduce it? If anything, it should have got 10 watts. And 45 watt wire charging should have been on this on this device here so they call this the ultra but what's ultra about it besides the size of it i mean that's to me that's the only thing that's ultra about it, the size of it and these cameras now these cameras are ultra but other than that it's just the size i mean so much of this is not an ultra device it's just not and i did a video on that as well now, you do get IP68 water and dust resistance, which is standard on most premium devices. Dual stereo speakers. Now, the speakers are much louder and fuller than that of the previous two devices here. So the speakers do sound better on here. So that's something they actually did right. Of course, you still got Samsung decks, 
Samsung Pay with MST still on this one. The power button is back on the right side where it belongs. You have a smaller punch hole camera. As you can see how small that is compared to that of the Note 10 Plus. Much smaller, so much more non-intrusive. Your S Pen uh, got moved to the left side. It was always on the right side. So now it's on the left. And also they moved the speaker that's always been on the right to the left. So I don't like this placement for both of these at all. So I don't like that either. And it comes with a frosted back. So the back of this device is frosted. But it's weird. Now, I don't know why they only... Now with the bronze color, this is the bronze. I don't know why they made this the only color that came with a frosted back. So if you got black, if you got white, and I think those are the only three colors that they actually came out with, all glossy backs except this one. Why would you only do one color with a frosted back, Samsung, and then give us a glossy back on the other devices? It makes absolutely no sense. But I do like the feel of this because there's no fingerprints, and I love the feel of it. Now, excellent build quality on this device, but this is the only one with the browns color that you're going to get a frosted back. If you get the black one or if you get the uh, white one, it's going to be a frosted. I mean, it's going to be a glossy back. So I don't I don't get that. And also something that was new on here was 50 times uh, zoom on the rear camera. So you could zoom in 50 times. Now, I don't understand that either. Remember, this is called the Ultra. With the S20 Ultra, which came out before this, they gave this 100 times hybrid zoom and only gave this 50 times hybrid zoom. I don't get it. Why, why wouldn't this get 100 times zoom as well? You call it the Ultra. Why would you take away, why would you limit, limit, limit it to 50 times zoom? I don't get it. But it did come with laser autofocus, which is what, the s20 ultra lacked so there was some focusing issues with the s20 ultra but i do still love this device a lot like i said it's my most used device my sim card never comes out of this device my main phone number is in this phone so this is my main phone but still my favorite phone is the mi 11 ultra but this is still a great device even with all its flaws Next up is the S20 Ultra. This also was released in 2020. 6.9 inch Quad HD Plus Dynamic AMOLED Display, Gorilla Glass 6, always on display, face unlock, ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Now the battery life on here is considerably better than that of the Note 20 Ultra. Considerably better. Well, keep in mind, it's 500 milliamp hours larger. So it's considerably better than that of the Note 20 Ultra. This easily gets me through the day with no battery anxiety at all. I can end the day sometimes with 50% battery. So a moderate to heavy usage, 50% battery. So the battery on here is great. You get dual stereo speakers that are pretty good. 12 gigs of RAM. Expandable storage up to one terabyte, which is good. But for some reason, they decide only to put 128 gigs of internal storage on here, which is a disappointment, but there is a 256 and 512 gig variant. <coughs> Excuse me. You're getting IP68 water and dust resistance, 15 watt fast wired, cha uh, wired charge, I mean, 25 watt and 45 watt super fast charging capabilities. So also another device same year that this came out with they give this 45 watt super fast charging capabilities but this came out after this and they gave this one 25 watt charging i don't get it why would you give this one 45 watts and you give this one 25 watts this is what i'm saying samsung is a confused company i, I don't get that and this is supposedly called the ultra 2 both of these are ultra devices but this they just shaved this one down and made it kind of mediocre besides the size of it in the cameras but they they made it mediocre to, in my opinion when you call it an ultra device now if they just called it a pro i don't know if i'd have been as upset but you called it an ultra so with an ultra i want ultra stuff so 40 25 watt charger in the box 
but it has 45 watt charging capabilities and also 9 watt reverse wireless charging when they gave this one that came out after this one 4.5 watt reverse wireless charging i don't get it I, I i don't i don't i just don't understand that also samsung dex samsung pay with mst snapdragon 865 android 13 got um upgraded to android 13 however android 13 is the last installment far as google um android updates and also no more one ui updates now still going to get security patches for another year but after that that's it so snapdragon 865 android 13 one ui 5.1 one more year security patches 108 megapixel camera and i'm sorry i failed to mention that also with the note 20 ultra you're getting a 108 megapixel camera as well all right so 108 megapixel camera 100 times space zoom and you had the ability for the first time to shoot 8k at 24 frames per second not the stablest because 24 frames is not enough 30 frames would be okay but 24 frames per second not that great not that stable so that's that's overrated it's not all that you'll be fine at 4 4k at 60 which everything on this table shoots at 4k at 60 on the front and the rear cameras so this is the note 20 ultra i highly recommend this device it's an absolute beast absolute monster i love this device and i use it quite frequently and last up is the samsung galaxy z fold 2 love this device very different is my foldable i love this device beautiful beautiful huge display so you got a 6.2 inch display on the outside now this came out in 2020 also so you got gorilla glass victus on the front gorilla glass 6 on the back nice beautiful premium build now i got a case on this one too as well 6.2 inch outer display amulet though and a 7.6 inch dynamic amulet display with 120 hertz refresh rate so as you can see this display is absolutely beautiful it's nice and bright very thin bezels absolutely gorgeous always on display you get an always on display on the inside well i don't have my always on display turned on on this device i turned it off but you do you can turn it on for the inner display and the outer display so you can have it for both now i'm using this particular lock screen here which i love and you could this is a, a live lock screen so i love that all right now you got a side mounted fingerprint sensor right on the side there i'm not the biggest fan of side mounted fingerprint sensors i mean at least not on samsung devices but maybe other devices are better i know i have a redmi note 11 pro and the fingerprint sensor is just flawless this one not too much but it does have for those of you that don't like in display fingerprint sensors 4500 milliamp hour battery easily gets me through a full day usually i'll come on with like 40 something percent left moderate to heavy usage and that's with the screen open because i'm always watching movies on my phone and the front screen is okay but it's too small too narrow for me so i'm opening it up like this most of the time you got 25 watt fast wire charging no super fast wire uh, wire charging on this uh, only 11 watt wireless charging keep in mind the um the, the original galaxy fold had 15 watt wireless charging they only gave this 11 so they took a step back with this one too keep in mind this was a two thousand dollar device i didn't pay that much for that for this not even close but this was a two thousand dollar device when it was first released snapdragon uh 4.5 watt reverse wireless charger that's slow snapdragon 865 plus android 13 one ui 5.1 that's the last installment of android and one ui for this device however it has one more year security patches if you're interested no ip68 water and dust resistance at least not on this one but if you don't have your phone near water it's not going to matter not a big deal no headphone jack you do get 12 gigs of ram 
256 gigs of internal storage that's um <clears throat> was reduced because the original fold came with 512 gigs of ram standard and they took a step back and with the fold 2 only put 256 gigs this is what i'm talking about samsung took two three steps forward took two or three steps back and keep in mind with the original fold they put a case in the box and they put headphones in the box and they gave you a charger all in the box and a beautiful presentation this the only thing you got with the z fold 2 was the charger that's it same price as the original the original was 2000 this was 2000 but they took away the case and they took away the headphones you got a pair of wireless headphones with the original fold and you lost um it went from 512 gigs down to 256 gigs of internal storage also on this you get flex mode so if you're say if you wanted to use the camera you can basically like that you know use this like as a keyboard so you got your flex mode which a lot of people use and i love it great thing to have all right Oop. You got stuck on me. All right, there you go. <laughs> All right, so you on here Samsung Pay, MST still on here. All these phones got MST, so that's good. They didn't remove the MST until the S21, so keep that in mind. Samsung Dex, you got three cameras on the rear. All of all are 12 megapixel cameras. You had a wide, ultra wide, and a telephoto. You got a 10 megapixel wide on the inner display, which is right here. And you have a 10, meg, uh, 10 megapixel wide on the front display. And the best thing about these cameras, all of these cameras, whether on the back, in, inner, or outer, all shoot at 4K at 60 frames per second. So you're going to get great value with all of these devices. I highly recommend all of these devices. But for me, I would rather buy an older flagship device then get um, some of these newer mid-range devices. That's just me. But if you're somebody that needs the latest and the greatest, or you're somebody that needs, you know, the latest, latest security patches, you need the latest software updates, and, you know, everybody got their own flavor. That's something that's maybe important to you. Now, it's not important to everybody, but it is important to some people. But if you don't care about um, the latest and the greatest, you don't care about having the latest version of Android or you're not concerned about security patches, then you may want to consider, <coughs> excuse me, these devices. Because they're, they're, these are all great devices. The Note 9, the Note 10 Plus, the Note 20 Ultra, the S20 Ultra, and the Z Fold 2. I love all of these devices. As you can see, I'm definitely a Samsung Knight. I also use a Samsung S Plus tablet. <laughs> so I got a lot of Samsung devices. I also have a Note 7 that I really don't use anymore because the battery is just so bad in that phone. But I have a lot of Samsung devices. I I also had uh, the Z Flip. I gave that to my wife. So I'm definitely a Samsung Knight. And also, <laughs> I got a Samsung uh, watch right here, the, the Watch 4 Classic. So I love Samsung products. I don't not I'm not the biggest fan of their newer products because they remove too many things. You know, no expandable storage from the S21 on. I don't like that. Of course, they took away the headphone jack, no iris sensor, no LED, no no headphone jack, no no heart rate monitor. You know, and and with the S23, still no faster charging. You know, just still at 45 watts still 15 watt wireless charging when <clears throat> this is 67 watt wireless charging and 67 watt super fast wired charging and 10 watt reverse wireless charging which is faster than everything on this table everything on this table <laughs> so yeah these are great devices don't get me wrong but when it comes down to value i'm getting the value out of this now, the thing that has out of all of these, the ones going to give you the greatest value, but it's the oldest device on the table is the Note 9. It's going to give you the complete package. Like I said, the only thing that's missing is a wide angle lens on the rear camera and an IR blast. Other than that, this has everything. 
all of these are missing things. Now the displays are better on these, the speakers are better on these, the cameras are better on these, but if you want the complete full, complete package, you want the Note 9. But at the end of the day for me, I'm gonna go with the Note 20 Ultra, and then right after that, I'm gonna go with the Z Fold because I love having a foldable device and I love having a display this big, especially when I wanna watch content. I want to watch a movie. <laughs> this is what I want to watch it on. This is huge. And this is good for production. If you want to multitask and you want to have three apps open at the same time, you're going to do that on here. This is a, one of them big, highly productive type of uh, devices. You know, if you're all about production or productivity, you want to check one of these out. I love this device. I love it. I don't need the Z, you know, the Z4 4. This is fine for me. Now, of course, with that one, you're getting S Pen, you're getting some water and dust resistance, you're getting better cameras, you're getting a newer chipset, you're getting a slightly wider display. So some people may want to go with that, but when it comes to value and for what you're going to pay for this compared to that one, I would choose this one, but that's just me. Or you may want to go with the Z Fold 3, but like I said, I'm cool with the Z Fold 2 because you're going to pay less money. So thank you all for taking the time to view this content. I do appreciate it, especially for those of you that made it all the way to the end. Because I know most people today, that you know, their, what you call it, attention spans are very, very short these days. So for those of you that actually stayed to the end, I do appreciate it very much. And um, I'll be giving away a phone when I get 6,000 subscribers. I already have the phone in-house. I'm going to try my best to do a first impressions of that phone on tomorrow if if i'm able to so thank you all for taking the time to view this content i do appreciate it hope everybody hope everybody out there is staying safe and staying well and i'll check you guys out in the next one peace